huge to hold the Eagles to field goals, no doubt about it. That was huge. I mean, just for us to not really feel like we were getting going with some of the mistakes that we made and to watch them get going um, with some of the explosives they made and just moving the ball pretty well. Um, but it was huge to hold up to two field goals. And um, despite all that, the third possession, we got the ball. They scored twice, but we were only down six. And we just got one drive together and got the lead back. So it was, it was a, a huge deal and a very good feeling. What about the Jerry Greenlaw ejection? Oh, yes, please. What about it? I tried my hardest not to lose my mind. Hopefully I didn't embarrass myself too bad. I didn't get to see it all from where I'm at, but when I start hearing people explain it to me and stuff, and I just can't believe someone not involved in a football game um, can taunt our players like that and put their hands in our guy's face. And um, from what I was told, um, Dre did it back to him, and I was told that he kind of ma mashed him in the face a little bit, so he got ejected, but um, it was a... It was a very frustrating play. I got to watch it to have a true opinion on it, but um, I loved how we rallied after it. It, it wasn't even a punt. Like, look, look, Dre's got to be smarter, number one. Like, let's preface this. You can't get thrown out of a playoff game. It was a weak throw out, but it was a weak ejection. But, but you Terrible can't, ejection. You can't put yourself in that position. That's number one. I want to preface that. Number two, it wasn't a punch. It was a finger point across the face. Yeah, it wasn't a punch. It was all. a finger point across the face. Now, that being said, when the Astros bench coach was talking smack to the A's yeah, a couple years that. back, it's the same thing. If you're not in between the lines, you cannot get in the fight. Yep. I'm sorry. You can't touch players. Nah, you can't Those that. that are actually playing. It's the same thing when Zimmerman, Dom yeah. Zimmerman, got, got bodied by Pedro. Right. When you're rushing out to someone, all people see is people on the field. And if you're going to put yourself in that position, it's all fair game. Yeah, no, big Dom Now, is Greenlaw's got to be smarter. He does. He's got to be smarter. You that know what? Said, but that was a physical game. What the game. hell is Dom doing? Right. Dom, I don't know what he's doing, but that was a weak ejection. Call the 15-yard penalty and keep it moving. Keep it moving. Like, that. that's not an ejection. And you know what? I like that Drake Greenlaw put Devontae Smith on his back because they were talking, talking. They've been talking a lot. And you know what? Keep talking, and you're going to get dipped on your neck. And that's what happened yesterday. They got out hit. They got out schemed. They just got bodied yesterday. He, and all facets of the football game, special teams, uh, run game, pass game, defensive assignments, they got bodied. We talked about physicality, and Bill Romanowski said it on Friday. I believe Philly is soft. Wait, where's the Romo sound? When he said Philly is soft, he told us on Friday, who better to tell us about being soft than Bill Romanowski? How about when Juwan Jennings just I feel like the they're a little bit soft. And they were. When, when Jawan Jennings threw their whatever third or fourth corner, he just just drew him and walked into the end zone. They wanted no part. The other thing, I know there were two sideline plays uh, in this game. One where Hertz is rolling to his left. Javon Hargrave, and, and yes, and Hargrave gave him a shot. And you know what? If you're going to stay in bounds and try to make that throw, and you're going to run around like that, hey, you're in the field of play. We're going to push you out of bounds. The other one when Gainwell got suplexed by Drake Greenlaw, oh, yes. I was like, Gainwell's done. Hey, and then Deion Lenore. Done. Diomar Lenore, this is what I loved about this game yesterday. Aubrey the Thomas Niners laid play, some hits, too, B. Diomar the, 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 the play, though, it showed that the Niners were playing 60-minute football. They didn't take any plays off. Lenore could have held up on Swift late in the football game. That was shoulders. But that was another warning shot to Philadelphia. When we come see you again, this is what we're bringing to the table. We didn't pack our little boy pads. We didn't, pop the, we didn't pack the peewee pads. We packed the big boy pads across the country. And we're going to hit you all night long. And it happened on the first play. To, how, how ironic is it that the cornerbacks had the biggest hit to the game? I, I, I'm telling so you. Tavares wore first play of the game. Chaskey's like, oh, wait, Devontae. I was like, no, nah, that was Swift. Swift got hit on the first play of the game for Tarverius Ward. First play of the game. He popped. And, and look at the way Warner ran back to the huddle. I want you to go, when you go <laughs> okay. back and watch the game, All right. look at the way he ran back to the huddle. He was looking around like, oh. I didn't even have to lay that hit. How that was Tarverius Ward. He lost his shoe right after uh, Greenlaw got ejected and couldn't wait to run back out on that field. And somebody laid the hat. I don't know if it was Jair Brown or whatever. Somebody laid a big-time thump, and he came flying back yeah. onto the field. I, just, I love Fred. Hey, hey, you know what? what? I want to hear from Fred. Yeah, yeah, Fred, yeah, yeah he, he, he talked. Somebody asked him about this being a grimy football game. Who's Fred? Let one. me hear him. That's, that's the feel for me, honestly. And like I said, obviously, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be like, man, grimy game. You won 42-19 or whatever the score was. But like I said, like in those beginning, the, the beginning of the game, those crucial moments where we had to stand tall mm -hmm. in the red zone, the offense couldn't really get anything going to start the game. But then, you know, bouncing back and getting the run game going and making those big plays, losing guys, penalties, you know, shifts of momentum. But you guys stepping up and making the plays when they needed to make them, that was uh, – as, as grimy as it gets. It's as grimy as it gets. And I'll ride with Fred Water in a grimy football game. Hey, if he anybody also, knows about grimy, right. <laughs> it's us here in the Bay Area. <laughs> and then, and then Fred Water has something to say about Debo Samuel. Oh. 
You know, Debo is one of the best football players I've ever seen. You know, uh, performances like that don't surprise me. It's, it's only a matter of time when he does, you know, kind of pop off like that. And, you know, people were saying things about things that he may have said before the game. But I think it's safe to say he uh, his actions spoke louder than his words. So <laughs> Big time. Three touchdowns. Clip three that touchdowns last part. From Debo. His actions <laughs> spoke louder than his words. He stood on ten toes. He's still in the Black Air Force Ones. Watch your Fred Warner. I'm telling you, and I'll tell you for the explain 7 o'clock audience. It, before you go, explain what the Black Air Force Ones are to people that maybe aren't in the know. Well, when you see people wear Black Air Force Ones, you know they're about that life. They're shoes. They're shoes. Okay. And they're all black. But when a guy wears all Black Air Force Ones, he's about that life. Now, we saw it with Terrence Crawford before he fought Errol Spence Jr. Okay. And Errol Spence had his Black Air Ones on, but Crawford did too. And it was like, oh, these guys mean business. <laughs> and it means they're about that life, if you know what I mean. When you saw a dude on the block with black Air Force Ones, you knew, okay, maybe I should cross the street. That's what it means. And Debo walked in there, and I, and I, it, the tone wasn't set in the first quarter. What set in the second quarter? The tone was set the minute the Niners left the hotel in Philadelphia It got on that team bus in all black. And I saw Debo walk into the stadium in all black. And I saw George Kittle in all black. And I saw Tr- Trent Williams in all black. And I saw Fred Warder in all black. And I said, oh, okay. It's not It's not just a big game to us. It's a big game to the men wearing those uniforms. And they wore it proudly yesterday in Philadelphia. Speaking of which, Trent Williams? <laughs> hey, this is why I thought January 29th, the NFC title game, the Niners are going to win because they had a quarterback. I, we, I had full confidence that we would, we would have this type of game from, from, the, from the jump. You know, we got a quarterback, so it made it a lot easier this time. We got a quarterback. Well, there was a hint of irony and no one's rooting for any, nobody's rooting for injuries, but like, hey, we, we, we lost our quarterback, right? And and we didn't have a traditional backup in there. You saw their backup for like two or three snaps, and everyone was like, yeah, Mariota ain't got it. Right. He's, he, he's throwing a pick. The more he throws, he's about to throw a pick in this game. <laughs> no doubt. I mean, we knew like right yeah, away. The right away. Uh, by the way, uh, YouTube chat here. Shout out, shout out to YouTube. I mean, YouTube is humming. There's over 1,600 people. Somebody just tweeted out. Who said that? Kyle Kelly. 1,600 people on YouTube. This is Warrior Parade numbers. You're damn right it is. Film on Mike right now is on 94 WIP. No. Make sure we clip that call. No. Apparently, he's just on it right now, rolls to those clouds. I know you guys are doing a great job back I love there Fillmore flipping Mike. it. Let's Look, get the, Fillmore Mike. <laughs> uh, I need to talk to him. Yeah, let's get to Adam in San Francisco. We'll get that call from Film on Mike. Get Matt Nahegan on it. WIP 90, 94 WIP. Film on Mike is roasting the Philadelphia Eagles right now on Philadelphia Sports Radio. So make sure we clip that call. We flip that and we'll play it in a second. But Adam in San Francisco, I know you're going to bring the heat today. I know you're not going to waste our time on the morning roast. Eagles, the best team in the NFC. Jalen Hurts, MVP of the league. Eagles have better wide receivers than the Niners. Nick Sirianni, the better head coach than Kyle Shanahan. To the whole Eagles fan base, Eagles team. What a win. I wanted to get the flowers to the defensive backs. I mean, Dylan Hurts had all the time in the world yesterday, but our back end held up. They played really well. Ward, yeah, A.J. Brown had a good game, but Ward, when he counted in the end zone, played his ass off. Uh, Kinlaw's got to get a game ball. And uh, game ball to Kyle Shanahan as well, but what a win. You know, they drafted Diamond Lenore and Aubrey Thomas in the same draft a couple years ago. And, I don't know, you're hoping one of them can be serviceable, right? When they made the change this year and put Aubrey on the field, most Niner fans are like, oh, boy. This is we're, what we're down, down to. bad. Yeah. We need to go trade for we're Patrick down bad. Yeah. It might have been the game-changing, season-changing defensive personnel switch. Obviously, Chase is going to get a lot of, of, of head nods because he's a sexy name who everyone recognizes because he was high in the draft right. with Ohio State. Putting Diamond Nor Lenore in the slot, putting Aubrey Thomas on the field, it has changed their secondary, and, and, and that's without Hufanga. That's without Hufanga, who, by the way, Jair Brown cleaned it up. He's got to miss, clean up the missed tackles, but it's not like Hufanga didn't miss tackles. He missed tackles, too. I thought but, Devon, but that was what, just a really nice run by no, Devontae. It, it was, but no, the A.J. Brown quick slant. That one, too. You know, A.J. Brown's it's Devontae monster. Smith, third 19, wide receiver screen. I know. You can't let him convert that. That's one issue. Philadelphia did convert a lot of third downs and third and long situations. However, I like the fact that they were in third and long because the Tush push was non-existent. Now, the Niners on third down, both teams were pretty efficient on yeah, third what down. what did the Niners finish? 8 of 11 on third down. 72.7%. After, after on, going 0 for 2. 0 for 2. So, basically, wow. they converted 
eight of their last nine third downs. I, I'm telling you. That's are, crazy. The one that you referenced, the third and seven to Brandon Ayuk on the out. On the out route. The set of things down on 20, play, yeah. 21 to 13, yeah. and he settled them down. Anticipation. I thought Ayuk Great bodied the, the DB. like He used yeah. his back to kind of shield the guy. That was a really nice play, the nope. one you referenced earlier. Philadelphia, eight of 15 on third down. Eight of 15. But the Niners were able to force a lot of punts. Making Jalen Hurts hold the ball, hold the ball, hold the ball. And Nick Bosa talk about the unselfishness of this defense. Yeah, you you get a push, and then he sees that. So his eyes immediately go off, off of his receivers, and he's dipping and dodging. You have a guy in front of you. You're trying to – just trying to keep him – Keep them in in the pocket. It's it's tough. Obviously, you don't want to be blocked for ten seconds on a play, but um, it was it was an unselfish mentality from everybody. And J.K. got two, Kalia got one. Um, it ended perfectly. It was, it was awesome. I, I wish Bosa didn't reveal that because I understand a hundred percent what he's saying. We get the rush initially. All of a sudden, Jalen Hurts' eyes gets off his receivers, gets off his mark, and he's thinking about running. But now they got that on tape. Look, they're going to make adjustments well, or whatnot. They know, and the players know whatnot. But Bosa, I was wondering, is this the assignment? Is this the assignment to just kind of just sit back? I thought Bosa worked his ass off He yesterday. did work his ass off. I don't think Lane the numbers Johnson's, are going to show it, but no. I thought he worked his butt off. And the other thing be, again, I won't. Jalen Hurts is a really, really, really good football player. But in terms of playing the quarterback position in the Niners offense, I don't think he'd look as good in our offense. With the way that we do things, like Maybe what, not. He, what he does with that team, it right. works. It does. It works. Like the way he plays no the doubt. position is very no different doubt. than Brock Purdy. No doubt. But what Brock Purdy does and the way that it he plays the position, offense. it works with this team much better. And they asked Jalen Hurts. You hear what I'm you, saying? Yeah, no, I understand completely. And I'm not what you're diminishing Jalen. No, yeah, yeah. It's all the barbershop talk and yeah. the bar talk where we say, oh, swap this quarterback. For this no, quarterback, and he looks at no, you can't you do can't. it. We got to live in reality here. Exactly, that's their reality, and it works for them. But I think they put too much on his shoulders. Oh, I'm they abandoned it. They, look, it was a one-score game midway through the third quarter, and they got pass happy. See, I don't think they can run off tackle because our linebackers are too fast. Maybe. They want to do that off Maybe. tackle run, they do. and I'm telling you right now, but, Greenlaw and Warner also, were not giving that up. But also, though, they love to run the ball right up the middle, and they spread you out. Yes, they spread the Niners out so much that. Water was the only linebacker. I thought maybe the Eagles paid too much okay. respect to the okay. Niners defense. Just my opinion. But Swift you can't got get popped. that guy. He got popped. He got but, popped in this game. But the fact he only got six carries in what was basically a one score game for the most for the better half of two and a half quarters. Well, Bonte, the difference between a CMC and a DeAndre Swift. And DeAndre just had a really, really phenomenal year. No doubt. CMC, even in a bad game, has to be fed no and doubt. will find ways to churn out yards. Yep. I'm sorry. Like, if they had CMC, they would have continued to feed him. Yeah. DeAndre, I, I just, I don't look at but, DeAndre that but, way. But they had a great year. Great year. I just, I, I, I'm shocked that they didn't go. And they have running backs. DeAndre Swift has ran hard. I thought the Buffalo game, the Buffalo game with Philadelphia outlasted them in overtime. The key for them was giving the ball to yeah. DeAndre Swift in yeah. the second half. Yeah. They had been in the run last week against Buffalo. DeAndre Swift had 14 carries, 80 yards. That's 5.7 yards a carry. But I, five I'm, seven to carry. But I'm looking at it from my perspective. If I'm the Niners, right. the two guys I don't want to beat me: AJ Brown, Devontae no Smith, because they could get a big chunk plays. I dare you to hand it off to but, DeAndre Swift. But but you know what sets them up is the fact that DeAndre Swift runs the That's football. True. Think about the Kansas City game; they were down bad. Swift had 12 carries, 76 yards in that football game, 6.3 yards a carry. And what that does is all of a sudden it does open up A.J. Brown to Devontae Smith. When you go pass happy, the secondary is like, we don't even have to worry about the run game. We don't have to worry about coming up hitting in the running game because they're getting pass happy. Well, you cannot go one-dimensional against the Niners. True. You actually have to try to run the ball. And I thought no, Philadelphia right. just said, you know what? Screw the run game. Well, and I thought they did a great job spying the quarterback and mixing that up. And also on the deep shots – Ward made a play downfield. Aubrey Thomas made a great yeah. play downfield. They made a play in the end zone. I don't know. I thought our guys, Aubrey Thomas almost intercepted the ball no on doubt. the sidelines. No doubt. Delman and Lenore almost intercepted that ball on the sidelines. I thought we were making plays on the no, ball. I thought the coverage was excellent. E even in the red zone, they, they didn't even run the ball. In the red zone, That's they got down point. there, which is crazy. I was expecting and they a Jalen run. Right, Jalen run, run, swift run. I was like, geez. I was like, what's going on here with the Philadelphia Eagles? They got pass happy. Way too pass happy. Yeah, uh, but we saw, we've seen this with running backs. Like, yeah. you know, when Dalvin Cook was humming, 
He got hit early in that game against he Minnesota in the Minnesota playoff game. He wanted no part of it. Maybe DeAndre Swift didn't want to carry after getting popped by Trevor. I, I just don't think highly of Sirianni. Yeah. I, I think we've overrated. Well, well Howard Eskin with the saying that it's not even close. Sirianni's a better coach than Kyle Shanahan. Who got out coached yesterday? <laughs> I thought Steve Wilkes and Kyle Shanahan out coached both their yeah, guys. Sirianni, come on, man. Anybody, everybody in NFL, go ask twenty nine other. Ask Howie Roseman who he's taking, Shanahan or Sirianni. When John Lynch walks down onto the field, when the Niners are kicking butt like that, do, doesn't it feel like he wants to put a helmet on he and just go tackle someone? He does. Oh, I dude, love he was, John Lynch. He was smiling from ear to ear. Let's go to Abraham God, in Philadelphia. I love that man. Abraham in Philadelphia was at the game, and I know Abraham was smiling ear What's to ear. What's up, honest Abe? Woo! Hey, man. Good morning, Bonte and Shasky, man. Happy Victory Monday. Absolutely. Bear with me, man. I lost my voice, man. I've been yelling so much, man. I was at the tunnel with my best friend, John. Let's go. Man, this experience, this experience was absolutely surreal, man. Like, I just I'm like pinching myself because I really just can't believe, man. We went down to their field and we exposed these fools, man. <laughs> really, really told them that, you know, we could smoke the whole Philly pack, man, and some. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> Man, for the exception of the first quarter, I mean, I, I felt like we played a perfect game after that, mm -hmm. man. The first quarter, looking up at the scoreboard and seeing negative, I was like, oh, man, this is <laughs> this is going to be bad. You know, and the Eagles fans, they were chirping, you know, yelling in our ears. And, you know, it, it felt pretty bad, man. But the, after that, man, it was just, they were quiet, man. Hey, were, Abraham, yeah. how'd it feel? How'd it feel to be in that stadium with Debo Samuel scoring that third touchdown, oh. waving bye-bye oh, to that fan God. base? I, I, I'll tell you what, though. I missed it because me and my boy John, we were letting the fans have it, man. They, I mean, you know, we're, getting, we're getting the middle fingers, and then all of a sudden we look up and they're like, "We scored!" Like, oh, okay, all right then. And that you just start seeing all the aisles. You see a lot of green just just dissipating, man. They were leaving, mm. and it just. I don't know what to tell you guys, man. I, I I'm like happy I'm for like you, bro. I'm, I'm happy. Abe, I'm Safe legitimately. Travels. It feels like you experienced a once in a lifetime kind of feeling as a sports fan, and I'm so happy for you, bro. My guy Mo P was out there in Philadelphia. He got out there in Philly on Friday. Shout out to Mo P, Omari Green's boy. Mo P, I always see him at Chase, and he said, "Bonte, I'm going to Philly this year. I'm going to Philly." And he tagged me in some photos, and he was sitting right there. Filling it. So all the Niner fans out there in the Lincoln Financial Field, I've well, got a lot of videos. I'll, I'll, I'll kind of name some of the guys. I look through Instagram right now. But a lot of them was like, Bonte, they're soft. They're walking in here. They're walking to the stadium without even talking trash because I feel like they knew what was coming.